Congratulations on the, um, the Thorpe Award uh, finalist. Did Thank you, you. When did you hear about that and, and, and how, how that land on you? Actually, both of them, I was actually walking out to practice and someone told me I was going out to practice, so I really didn't get to take it all in until I got back to my phone after practice. Did you get a lot of congratulations there, didn't Yeah, I did. After that. What, 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 is that a, a, something you've aspired to? I mean, obviously you know what the award is and, and, and you know who it's designated for. Yeah, I really, I really like the uh, – I never, I ain't going to say that, but I just – I don't know. It's not, not really worked down. You know, it's just something big to be a part of, and uh, I'm proud to be a part of it. Did you hear from DeAndre? No, I have not. Okay. <laughs> I mean, even though, like – I mean, you know, everything is so, like, team-focused right now at the end of the year. That's got to be a significant, like, individual honor that you look back at. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's definitely a big thing to be a part of, and if I could win it, it's a big thing. But just if we can't get to that big one and win that, I really want to feel the same. Okay. And then uh, this is kind of an off-away-from-football question, but I heard that uh, you're the favorite player for Kirby's uh, daughter, uh, just in terms of their oh, whole yeah. family, <laughs> family uh, dynamic, what type of memories do you have of spending time with his kids and Mary Beth and them as a family together? Just seeing those kids grow up, especially when I first got here and we first went to the lake, and just seeing that family and seeing the kids really young and just always seeing them being nice to them, they're good kids. You don't, uh, I'm assuming, Frisco, Texas, you don't get back home for Thanksgiving? Do you go to the Smarts? Or no, I, I go to Covington at my aunt's house, and we all, my parents come out, all our family, and we all just meet up there. Okay. You my got dad's from Covington. Covington. Oh, yeah, my dad's from Covington. Okay. You got a favorite Thanksgiving side dish? Candy yams. There you go. <laughs> there you go. On the D line, who do you think? Uh, who eats the most? Who do you think is going to eat the most? JD, definitely JD. Some of the stories of the things I heard he's eaten, just, <laughs> I'm just like, this, that's awful. You're going to kill yourself. You haven't gotten to well, spend Thanksgiving with him yet? No, I don't think I want to. <laughs> You're not all inviting the, him all to your food, house. No, I'm not, definitely yeah. not inviting him. But I'm inviting all the DBs, but JD cannot come. All the food will be gone. Have you heard what type of things he eats? Or like? Yeah, but I don't think JD wants me to disclose those stories <laughs> okay. of the amounts of food he eats at one time. You have a bunch of Miami boys in the secondary. Any yeah. of those guys coming home with you? I mean, it's hard for some of those guys. I haven't got a head count yet on who's coming. So I told everyone they were they're all invited. So I'll, I'll probably find out tomorrow. Joe, when you talk about winning the big one, uh, do you guys like how your positions uh, similar to have you have been the last couple of years in terms of, uh, you know, just keep winning and you'd be in good shape probably. Yeah, like I said before, after December 9th, that's the only thing that really matters. You know, these right now, these rankings that are out now don't really mean anything. We were talking to Monty about what your job is, getting everybody lined up and everything, and uh, he jokingly said he, you spend most of your time getting Mark Davis, uh, Mark Webb, excuse me, <laughs> lined up. Um, but can you talk about that part of your job? I mean, obviously, it's not all interceptions and tackles. Yeah. There's a lot involved in your position in particular. Yeah, mo most of my job that, you know, people don't see is, like, I, I get people lined up all the time, and that's why I spend majority of my game doing, majority of, in practice, get guys lined up, and just alert them of little things that are going to happen before the ball snapped and pre-snap motions and things like that. So do you remember anything from the George George State rivalry? I, I know you're from Texas, but you got family here in Atlanta. Do you remember anything or know anything about the rivalry itself? I learned about it when I first got here and the first time I actually had to practice for it and getting cut. And that's when I really, really, really started to grow a hate for that Georgia Florida, I mean, the Georgia Tech rivalry. So, so if y'all win that game, what are those emotions like? And does it feel uh, a little bit different than any other one? You just run the state, you know, and it's bragging rights. And, you know, we just got to go out there and do what we got to do. Jerry, a lot of these games recently have been about kind of field position, uh, you know, tight, low-scoring games. Um, what about Jake, how he's kind of, Jake Camarda, how he's kind of picked up his game since the beginning of the year, and, and uh, what has he meant for you guys? Jake's done an unbelievable job, especially in that Auburn game, and he's just getting better each game, being able to punt the balls like we know he can. I think he's just becoming more confident in himself, and he's not getting it in his own head.
You mentioned Jordan Davis earlier. Where, as a player, where have you sort of seen him improve this year? Just being able to sustain throughout the game. You know, he's he's got more. You know, just push throughout the game. He can push himself more than he did last year, and he drops a little bit of weight, so that's helped him a lot too. What uh, what to you is is this a drastically different Georgia Tech team that you guys are playing for? Obviously, you mentioned the cut block before. Not as much triple option, but I understand they still have some option element they throw in there. Yeah, most definitely. They've really thrown out the option out of there. It's a different team. They do a good job. They have good coaches. They like to get the ball down the field and throw vertical passes. Is, uh, is, is, is LSU like a banned word in the locker room right now? Do you guys, is there any discussion, any work on that game? Uh, no, nah, we were just focused on tech, handle tech, and then we'll move on to LSU one week at a time. Well, you guys are stopping the run. What kind of pressure does it put on when teams kind of realize that to move the ball, they might just need to throw the ball a lot more than they're used to. Uh, you know, how do you guys like that as a secondary? I mean, you got to love it as a defense. You know, that's the number one thing. If you can't stop the run, you can't really win games. So when you hold a team to negative one, they got to do something. They got to pass, and you face a good team. And you know, it's our job to stop them, and like we did out there. But then they're gonna complete some passes. Did you? When did you realize it was negative one last week? Not until after the game. I didn't. I didn't really realize that until after the game. And I was blown away because they rushed for like 300 before, and that's a good team, and that's like unheard of. I don't know if anyone's held anyone to negative one. Yeah, this team, uh, uh, just how would you explain its ability to stop the run? Or just... just guys doing their job, you know, just guys going out there doing their job. They're not running around trying to make spectacular plays that they don't need to make. You know, they're just letting the ball come to them, letting the plays come to them. Guys are staying in their gaps. Guys are staying in their fits. They're not trying to, you know, rip off and go to a sack. And they're trusting their keys. It also seems like there aren't many, like, individual plays. I mean that in the best sense. It seems like there's always two, three, multiple guys around the guy in space. Yeah, it's swarming. Don't let them in. That's one of the things we preach. Don't let them in. We don't want them to score. So that's why you see a lot of guys running to that ball. And then everyone's just swarming to the ball. Everyone's hunting. Is it? Is everyone just smart? Does everyone just have a good nose for the ball? Or is just the football, coach is man. calling it well? I mean, Well, you know, at the end of the day, when the ball snaps, the name of the game is get to the ball. So those guys do their job. And then when the guy's out there with the ball, everyone's flying to it. And that's just the way we've been practicing and the way the coach has been coaching us. It just seems like you all aren't surprised by plays. It seems like you yeah. know what the offense is doing. Uh, we, we do a lot of preparation, me, Monty, Tate Crowder, uh, Malik Heron, do a lot of preparation throughout the week, and then we just stay calm, you know. It's a lot of adversity that goes on out there on the field. You know, teams are going to score, they're going to make big plays, but as long as you can stay even keel and stay calm under fire, you're able to bounce back. I was wondering, you you and Monty, obviously he's a mic and he's making calls too. How much do y'all have to be in sync? Do y'all, are y'all communicating much? Yeah, well, what time is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's 7.39, so about an hour we'll have a film session <laughs> When we be down there watching film together, we've been doing it the whole year, three days a week. So we, we watch film all Just the time. To me, Monty, mainly me and Monty, we'll get yeah. Malik Heron in there most of the time. And then whoever else wants to join us, you know, we, we let everyone know we're there. But me and Monty, we hit it hard. It's kind of an extra skull session. Yes, sir. Just us two. Just two.